Dr. Elias Cordova. Representing the WBC, we have the president, Jose Suleiman, the supervisor, Elias Ganem. Representing the Japan Boxing Commission, the chief commissioner, Makoto Hosaka. Introducing to you the officials as they are appointed, the ringside physician, Dr. Kei Suzuki. Timekeeper at the bell, Richi Hirano. The judges, Larry Rosadia, Ken Morita, and Masakazu Uchida. Now presenting to you the referee in charge of this main event, Octavio Meran. Tale of the tape, you heard Mike Tyson say before the fight that he's always at a physical disadvantage against his opponents, and here it is again, height, weight, and reach all in Buster Douglas's favor. But Tyson, once again, is in great shape at 220 and a half pounds. Rules for the fight, the one significant rule, and it is unusual, the three knockdown rule is in effect here. Again, Jimmy Lennon. His record, 29 wins, four defeats, one loss, one draw, with 19 wins by way of knockout. He's ranked number three by the WBC, number four contender in the WBA. Please welcome the challenger, James Buster Douglas. And his opponent, the defending champion on my left, really needing no introduction the world over. He's ready to fight out of the red corner and attired in black trunks. Hailing from Catskill, New York, he weighed in at a ready 220 and one half pounds. His outstanding record, 37 wins, no defeats, with 33 big wins by way of knockout. He's making his 10th defense of the heavyweight crown, introducing the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. Give me a break, please. Gentlemen, remember, the dressing room instruction. Shake hands and good luck, Bob. Everybody out. Douglas insists that he's going to shock the world in this fight. If he should upset Mike Tyson, it would make the shocks in Eastern Europe seem like local ward politics. He would shock most of the world if he could make it into the middle rounds. Well, he has convinced Mike Tyson in this very first round. Buster Douglas is a conventional fighter who likes to work behind a stiff left jab. Break! Get him Break! I'm surprised he Buster moving so well. I mean, he's really, I think the weight has made a difference in his upper body movement, in his legs. Keep that jab out there. He wants to tie Mike up every time Mike gets inside. And the problem a lot of fighters make is the fact they dropped that right hand of theirs and Mike Tyson's left hook is no cupcake. Keep in mind that Carl Williams looked pretty loose and relaxed against Tyson until Tyson hit him with a body punch about 45 seconds into the bout. Mike has not yet gone to the body against Douglas here. Well, the left jab of Buster Douglas is incredible because he's one of the few guys I've seen other than Larry Holmes and maybe a couple, a handful of guys that can put a guy down with the left jab. So the left jab is a key weapon for Buster Douglas. He fought a sculpted Adonis named Mike Williams on the undercard of Tyson Spinks and floored him twice in the early rounds with the left jab. Hey, hey, hey. Both heads. We're almost 90 seconds in, and as yet, Tyson has done no real damage to Buster Douglas. So Douglas punching on the break, and he gets a warning from Octavio Meran. Now 
Tyson begins to step in behind the left jab. He landed twice. He lost the right hand of Buster Douglas, but the problem I'm still seeing is the fact he steady, he steady drops that right hand as he throws it. Okay. Through a snappy looking right hand lead. Hey, hey. And then tied up and on rushing Tyson. See, Mike has to be careful also because Mike's standing in front of him too. Couple of right hands by Douglas. Tyson landing the jab again, and Mike misses with the right. With taller fighters, Mike has to really work extra hard to get inside. And see, this is to bust hey, Douglas' Mike. advantage. Okay. Left jab lands again for Tyson. He has not yet gone to the body. Against Frank Bruno, Tyson basically forgot Bruno's ribcage for the first four rounds and paid a bit of a price for it. Once he went to the body in round five, the fight was over pretty quickly. She does not allow Mike to work his body. He's trying to tie him up inside. In fact, he's doing a pretty good job here. Another right hand lead by Douglas, and Tyson lands the left hook. That was a good round for Douglas, and I gave it to him. Probably the best round I've ever seen him fight. That was a very docile round for Mike Tyson, throwing only 13 punches. But a number, a number of jabs, excuse me, but a number of fighters have had good first rounds against Tyson, and that was it. Let's see if Douglas can sustain it, Jim. Keep in mind that Tyson, a little more than three weeks ago, was knocked down in training by Greg Page. And there was some talk here that he was not as sharp as he has been for previous bouts. You never know until he's in the ring. Hey, hey, don't do that. Every time that Mike comes inside, apparently uh, Doug has been doing a lot of watching of uh, films because he takes a move. He steps to his right, give him a little angle. Douglas giving as good as he gets inside right there. He outlanded Tyson by punch stat computations. 22 punches to eight. A very one. hard right hand by Douglas inside that Tyson walked right into. And right through, I might add. Left hook by Tyson was partially blocked by the right glove of Buster Douglas. We talked about intimidation before the fight. Douglas has so far shown no signs of being intimidated. See, what, what they want from Tyson's corner, they want to see more upper body movement and also more punches thrown as opposed to the one big punch. And that's what Mike Tyson's doing now. Douglas Another right hand lead lands for Douglas. Douglas not afraid. That is apparent. And what's happening, Douglas started to get his punches off first, which is the key to boxing. You get your punches off first. He's got pretty quick hands for a big man. Well, the lighter Douglas is, the faster his hands are, the more accurate his punches are. Not a lot of power. As Larry referred to when he talked about Tyson walking right through the solid right. I wouldn't necessarily say that because I think Tyson has a pretty good chin. And he's compact. And what's happening, every time Douglas throws a shot, in fact, it was a good body shot by Mike Tyson. First good body shot he's thrown. Tyson keeps that chin tucked in. As you watch Buster Douglas try to tie Mike Tyson up inside, remember that fighters such as James Tillis and Mitch Green and Bone Crusher Smith have thoroughly frustrated Tyson at times with just that tactic. What I'm seeing now is the fact that Douglas is getting Mike Tyson to reach in. When you reach in, 
That's what another happened. good right hand and a good right uppercut and two more good rights by Douglas. I don't think I've ever seen Tyson absorb that kind of a four or five punch okay. combination before in his professional career. Now, Mike is not going on. He's not attacking Buster Douglas, which indicates that there is some respect here. And also, and also a little puzzlement, Ray. He just doesn't seem to know how to go about it. That's another good round that I gave to Buster Douglas. I don't think there's any doubt about that one. Close the gap, Mike. Get inside in there. All right? Come on now. Seven seconds. Seven seconds. Come on. Just like you on the pads. Relax. Same hand in the box and inside. Get inside. Don't lay back, Mike. Remember, you're all calling the pressure, Mike. You're moving your head to get in there. Now let's take a look at that combination. Douglas firing away. That right was high. Came back with a nice short left, a left jab. Came up with a right and a left that missed. And there he comes back, still punching. Ordinarily, in that kind of situation, Ray, Tyson likes to duck, let the other man fire and finish, and then come back with his punch. And, and what Douglas did so cleverly was to smother him and not give him a chance to throw back. See, that's what I'm surprised about, that Mike has not retaliated after his opponent throws his combination. And listen to these numbers, guys. By punch stat computations, in the first two rounds, Buster Douglas landed 52 punches, Mike Tyson, 16. Well, I don't know if he's going to shock the world, but, he sh but Douglas has shocked me so far. <laughs> Mike Tyson now is really serious now. He's really, really rushing this man coming in, but they may fall in the hands of Buster Douglas. Good left to the body by Tyson. That's the kind of blow which has done a lot of damage to previous challenges. You hear his corner, Tyson's corner saying, be smart, work your way in. Another good right, but Tyson comes right through it. Douglas still outlanding Tyson, outthrowing him. Okay. Again, Jim, the, the yellow from Tyson's corner to work your way in, not to walk in there because that jeopardizes you, puts you in a lot of trouble. Douglas accurate with the jab. Miran told him, telling him not to hold and hit. No, 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 no. Now what Douglas can't do, he can't allow himself to get frustrated and try to exchange with Tyson. That could be fatal. I'm surprised I don't see as many body shots thrown by Mike Tyson. That would bring those hands down of Buster Douglas. Right hand by Tyson moving in. All right. Left and a right by Douglas. Tyson seems a little more precise in this round as he tries to move in, but it is still Douglas who is throwing and landing more often. Working behind the jab, as is his custom. Those right-hand leads have been very effective. They have been, but also you got to get those hands back up. What Douglas is doing, he's not allowing Mike to get his punches off to the midsection. Although there was a right hand to the rib cage there. Again, the yellow from Tyson's corner combination, not one punch. And that's why Douglas is able to get his combinations off, because he's only expecting a one-punch retaliation. Great, 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 great. Tyson's trying to leap in behind the left hook. He landed that one under Douglas's chin near the middle of the chest. Douglas with another right hand to the top of Tyson's head. Again, Tyson's corner yelling, You've got to punch inside. Good solid left jab by Douglas. Tyson raised him with the right. Three, three. Six, four, one inside. Don't just stand there looking at the work. You're not closing the gap, Mike. You got to get inside by jabbing and moving your head. When you get in the inside, you got to punch. All right? Come on, Mike. Punch, Mike. Jab, 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 overhand, right? Come back with your left foot. Okay? Relax. Oh, you're too flat-footed in there. All right. Okay? Trust get that in what you know. Do it. Let it go. 
今週の時から、田村岸井隆先生、大至急、インゴサイド放送席まで入りました。Don't be so cautious with the punches. Let them down. This is the first time since Kevin Rooney hasn't been with Mike Tyson that he's needed some answers from the corner. Let's see if he's got the right answers. They're trying to make him just fight, not look to just wing big punches, expecting Douglas to fall the first time he lands something. And the man who does most of the talking in Tyson's corner and who leans forward to whisper in his ear is Aaron Snow. If you watch what Douglas is doing now, he's trying to double that jab up. And see, the second jab is not really hard, but it blinds you for a second. second. That's when you drop the right hand. And you notice Douglas is trying to throw not just one jab, but two jabs. There was an expression on Tyson's face, and uh, I can relate to that, because sometimes you get into the ring, Jim, you just don't have it. Things just don't click in. And maybe that's what he's feeling now. He's just not on. Well, we're in round four, and a lot of ringside observers didn't expect the fight to go this far. It should be pointed out that stamina has been a problem for Buster Douglas throughout his career. And in the last two weeks, he's been bothered by respiratory illness here. He was taking penicillin just this past week and antihistamines. You have to wonder how far he can go at this level of effectiveness. Douglas still landing the jab and then stepping away. Tyson seems less aggressive than is normally the case. Perhaps a little frustrated. Well, Buster Douglas definitely is inspired because of the tragedy, the passing of his mother. And reminds me of when Howard Davis' mother passed during the 1976 Olympics. It really motivated him because he was doing it for mom. Everyone in Douglas' camp said that would be the case today. He was extremely close to his mother. Right hand by Douglas, right on Tyson's chin. The double jabs, especially with a big man, is difficult to penetrate. Always difficult to penetrate. Critics of Tyson say that since the departure of Kevin Rooney, he has been increasingly easy to hit. There's very little head movement here today. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's a natural fighter. You don't think that the loss of Rooney as trainer has made any difference? I don't really believe that. But one thing about it, I guess that must you know, be a little contradictory, but normally to keep the same family, it's always a plus. But then, it, then again, sometimes you must change. As you did. Yes. Good enough hook Douglas by Douglas. again with a left and a right. And now Tyson lands a right hand and backs Buster up, but here he comes. Michael, when Michael is punched, Mike is dropping his hands, which is very dangerous. Well, if Mike Tyson, who loves pigeons, was looking for a pigeon in this fight, he hasn't found him. You've got to use that seven to get inside, Mike, to back this guy up, and you've got to move that head. All right? Get that rhythm. And, if, and there, of course, is Evander Holyfield, who has a guarantee of $12 million to fight Mike Tyson in June. And right now, that $12 million isn't in the bank. Okay. You come on, you want all four rounds. You, you got to hold your concentration. Now you're good. You have to come back. Everything will be there. Everything will be there, Tim. Come back. Okay. The work of Douglas people tell Douglas he's won all four rounds, and shockingly. I agree with them. Trainer J.D. McCauley and manager John Johnson very calm in the Douglas corner. He's thrown 114 jabs in the bout, and by punch stat computations, he has landed almost half of them. Extremely effective working behind the left jab, Buster Douglas. Now Tyson lands a jab. 
This is the round in which Tyson turned things around against Frank Bruno. Right hand by Douglas lands again. He's been very quick with it. No, Mike. No. No points. Douglas get the breathing here. Very smart. Very, very smart. He throws his combination. Then he ties him up. There's just no head movement there, Ray. Mike is a stationary target for this guy. Well, that's the uh, that's the reason his corner is so petrified, because they see that Mike has become some of a stationary target. Directly in front of Buster Douglas. That's why the right hand's been hit later. Okay. Now, this, this is totally uncharacteristic of Mike Tyson. He's right there in front of his opponent. Not doing anything. Just reaching in. There's our right hand again. This will happen every time. The Another right hand, and now Tyson seems to be wobbled. Mike is not throwing back. Buster Douglas is completely dominating this round with jabs and right crosses. But what's going to do some damage now? Buster Douglas throw an uppercut. Tyson leaps inside with a left hook. One punch at a time, though. That's all he's throwing. There's the uppercut. Absolutely, the opening is there. Buster no Douglas is so relaxed, and this should save him in the later rounds if he should go that far. No, 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 no. It appears, Ray, that James Douglas is fighting a master fight in the geometry of the fight. Every time that Tyson appears ready to throw, he either ties him up like he just does, or he just backs off a little bit and moves his timing. Thus, thus far, he's fought the perfect fight because he's not being a stationary target, although he's not really uh, running around. There's a lot of swelling above Mike Tyson's left eye, and it is partially closed. And that is from the right-hand leads that Buster Douglas has landed almost at will throughout the fight. That left jab of Buster Douglas is a measuring stick. Very strong. Watch it come out, and then he drops the right hand. Well, I think you'd have to say this is the most trouble Mike Tyson has ever been in at this stage of a title defense. This is the most trouble Jimmy's ever been at any stage of a title defense. Now, Mike doesn't hit by leave right hand. That's another round for Buster Douglas. And he even dominated the exchange after the bell. You remember, at the top of the show, I said the good news is Buster Douglas always fights his best against the best opponents. This is even better news than that from his point of view. And he has swelled up Mike Tyson's eye and is dominating the fight right now. <laughs> Now, just watch this combination. A long right, a left jab hook somewhere in there, and he has been doing this over and over. Every time Tyson wants it, is willing, it takes a punch and he wants to fire back. Douglas fires back before he can. You begin to file through your memory for the biggest upset in heavyweight championship fight history. I, I don't think there would be anything like this. I agree. This would create a new standard of upsets if this went on. Clay and Braddock, not as big as this. Great, great. Great. Step back. Step back. All right. Question is, the stamina of uh, Douglas, as you pointed out, stamina has never been a problem for Mike Tyson opponents in the past. <laughs> and I would question the stamina of Buster Douglas at this kind of pace, Larry, but again, he is so relaxing there. By punch stat computations in the fifth round, Buster Douglas outlanded Mike Tyson three to one, 33 punches to 11. If anything, his dominance is increasing. Again, the, the leadoff rights, I'm very surprised they are landing like they are. Tyson landed an uppercut inside. And another right-hand uppercut by Tyson. Douglas doesn't appear hurt. Well, as long as Douglas stay there, he's, he's going to play right into Mike Tyson's hands. But the thing about all of this, uh, Jim and Ray, is, is that he's never given... Tyson a chance to use those amazingly fast combinations. Even when he gets hit in one punch and he smothers him or he fires back. 
The combination which destroyed Bruno and which has been so effective against a lot of opponents is the right hand to the body, followed immediately by the uppercut. And that punch lands when a guy is against the ropes or in a corner. And Douglas has not been there. Tyson finally blocked the right hand lead. Sorry, sorry. Little more peekaboo defense from Tyson now as he is clearly aware of the closing left eye. And that becomes a factor, especially for the very first time. Experience plays a major role in that kind of handicap. One of the things that his, his great mentor, Cus D'Amato, used to tell him was, it's no virtue to get hit, keep your gloves up. And, and Mike Tyson, in recent fights, which have been so easy for him, has forgotten that advice and has kept his hands down. Now you see, he's so worried that he's going back to what was called the peekaboo style of defense. He's got his gloves back up again. All right. What I don't see is the upper body movement from Tyson, and that's why Douglas is able to land those kind of punches. No head movement. Tyson <laughs> winging inside with a left and a right. No Douglas again ties him up. Lead off right once again. Mike needs to pick the tempo of the fight up. He has to make Douglas work. So far, he has not done that. Douglas not quite as quick and active in this round as he has been in previous rounds, but there's very little drop-off. And the champion looks frustrated. Missed with the leaping left. A confident Douglas goes back to his corner. Well ahead on points, you have to assume. I gave that round to Tyson, the first one I had. You're still laying on the outside on this guy. You got to back this guy up, right? You got to go to his body. Once you get inside, you got to punch, Mike. You definitely got to punch when you get in there, all right? When you get inside, don't look to hold. Use your right. hands. Set down your knees. You got your two punches, bro. Grease, maybe some grease. Grease, grease, grease. Just the right hand. Come on, why don't you do now, baby? Stay alert. It's your fight. Right. Your show. You got understand it me? One. Grease, baby. You got it one. Just stay in control. You stay alert. Control. This fucking guy's scared to death. That jab. Put shit on him. Keep that jab is a shot, baby. The jab, jab. right hand. Yeah. Huh? Uh -oh. Punch your hand. Punch seven. Seven. Punch seven. Everything off at seven. All right. Past the midway point of the scheduled 12 rounds. Few at ringside thought that Buster Douglas would make it this far. He has made it this far with a so far dominant showing over heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. If this fight was being held in the States, the crowd would be in an uproar right now. Here they are eerily silent. Douglas continues to outland Tyson at close quarters and then to tie him up. It has made an enormous difference in the talent of Buster Douglas by sharing off those pounds. He's so much quicker, he's so much agile, and he's so much accurate now. Buster needs to move a little bit more. He's standing, he's start, now he's starting to become stationary. Low blow by Tyson. Miran was behind Douglas and didn't see it. Douglas with another right hand, looping over the top. It's a great tempo for Douglas. Those his hands are down. Tyson still leaping and lunging behind the left hook, desperately trying to change the tempo of the fight. Another low blow. This time, Mayron saw it. Another right hand lead for Douglas, partially connected. 
Left jabs right on Tyson's face. This is the first time I've seen a big man in the ring with Tyson use his physical attributes to height and reach advantage. Tyson's corner liked what it saw with the left uppercut. It was almost 25 years ago when a 7-1 to one betting underdog named Cassius Clay thoroughly frustrated and whipped a Sonny Liston in Miami Beach at a time when Liston was regarded as invincible. You have to go back that far to find something this shocking in a heavyweight title fight. No combination about Mike Tyson. Gotta throw combinations, right? I hate you know, you know, you know, you know. All right, you're down. You're down on the floor, man. You gotta gut this one. You gotta gut this one. Don't relax. Grease. Double your jab Grease. every time it comes to you, and the right hand's only going to travel. Beautiful work, Chad. Beautiful work. Keep busting stay on strong. that eye. Stay that strong, but stay, stay alert. Okay. Everything else is in your ballpark, Chad. Now, this is an event that happened in training. It was dismissed. Tyson has been down before in training. Nobody takes it too seriously. But there you saw Greg Page step in with a right hand and Tyson go down. Round in a. fairness, I don't know how you can relate it to what happened here, except that Mike Tyson is anything but the dyna the dynamo this dynamic terror that we're used to seeing buster douglas has neutralized him frustrated him beaten him to the punch by punch count statistics tyson is averaging only 23 punches around he's going to have to step up the activity if he's going to turn things around here that knockdown in training took place just a little bit more than three weeks ago Everybody from Don King on down in Tyson's camp said it was no play acting, it was for real. Off this performance, I think you'd have to say yes, it's definitely for real. The graphic you saw between rounds demonstrated the huge disparity in jab effectiveness. Buster Douglas, thoroughly dominant in that department so far. Another solid straight left jab right to the middle of Mike Tyson's face. I'm watching the legs of Buster Douglas. There's a lot of spring to his legs, which means there's a lot of life to his legs. We're in the eighth round, folks. A heavyweight champion regarded as completely invincible in these circumstances is in big trouble. Get it Could you imagine Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world? Well, he's not only yet, Jim, but I tell you, he's put a good account of himself up. It boggles the mind. Well, he, he's asking some questions that Tyson, that Tyson hasn't been asked before. In the second half of a fight, he's got to come back and win it. Look at the punches. These right hand leads are not diminishing in effectiveness, guys. He is still landing just about all of them. Double jabs, lead off right hands. And now he's on the back mic up. No, no, no. Hitting on the break. Moran didn't say a word to him about it. There's a little swelling under the left eye now of Mike Tyson. Still beating Tyson to the punch, Ray. Well, there's just no question which is the more confident fighter now. You see how easily Douglas is dominating the action inside. And Tyson is holding on. I've never, never seen this happen before with Mike Tyson. He's always been the initiator. Here he's against the ropes. I've never seen. And there's a right hand uppercut and down goes Douglas. As suddenly as that. Can he beat the count? He got a little overconfident. Got a little loosey-goosey. Still wobbly. Let's see what Mike can do to finish. And the bell ends to save Buster Douglas at the end of round eight. Well, Tyson needed 
fight something like that desperately and like a real champion, he came through with it. It was though he baited Douglas in. I thought he was out of it. Let's take a look. Tyson is backing up. Now, perhaps he's trying to bait him to come in and to relax because that was the effect of it. Came off the ropes with that terrific right uppercut. What a shot. Shades of Frank Bruno. Let's see if what Douglas has when he comes out for this round. Second down. Second down. Round nine. He's had 60 seconds to recover. Clearly he was out. Three solid shots right on Tyson's face. Just missed with the uppercut on the break. And there goes Tyson inside and up and under again. defense at this moment they are just trading shots and now both men look a little weary now if i was Douglas, i would move now just move around just try to clear the head clear those cobwebs tyson misses with the right over the top and mike has slowed down maybe a tiny bit arm weary no, this is high drama, and the crowd here is greeting it by and large with stony silence. Probably disbelief, Jim. They came to see Godzilla. Both fighters weary from the pitched battle. Mike Tyson was on the verge of going down. the champion wobbles back to the ropes. Solid right hand by Douglas. The most action-filled, heavy-punching exchange round of Mike Tyson's career. And Mike Tyson is hurt. His eye is closing, and he is behind in this fight. Let him go. This is an incredible surge of, of strength and life in Buster Douglas. Come on now. Let's go. Let's take a look. Two lefts, and just Mike. Buster Douglas is just going at him, and what he's doing is what other fighters who have had Tyson in trouble have backed off to admire their work, and when he got him in trouble, he went at him. And Tyson has taken some big punches. James Douglas is not a great puncher, but, with, but he's a 230-pound man throwing some hard stuff, and Tyson, to his credit, has stood in there and took, taken the punches. Right hand by Tyson to begin the 10th round. Emphasis on man, Larry. This has been an inspired, courageous performance by a man whose mother has died within the past month, whose son's mother is battling a difficult kidney ailment, who had every reason to come into this bout depressed and downtrodden, chosen by no one to have a chance of getting out of the first few rounds, and he has thoroughly dominated Mike Tyson with the exception of the moment when he went down. Well, the other day, John Johnson's uh, Douglas manager and Douglas himself said, I am a new person now, and apparently he is. He's been a whole different person than the one every boxing expert expected to see here. It, it appears that Tyson is virtually a one-eyed fighter at this break, point. Break. This makes Cinderella look like a sad story, what Buster Douglas has done here tonight. Let's go ahead and call it the biggest upset in the history of heavyweight championship fights. Say it now, gentlemen, James Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I would be willing to say it's the greatest upset in boxing history.
There seems to be a little pandemonium here. In, in Las ring. Vegas, they wouldn't even put up any odds on this. Steve, as this giant monolith has been reduced to being another heavyweight champion, he's got defeated. Snowell saying to Tyson, who apparently was unaware, you were counted out. K.O. This victory for Buster Douglas could not have been more richly deserved. Well, Douglas did well. A lot of guys have done, a few guys have done in the past. They've hurt Tyson and didn't take advantage of it. Buster Douglas is inspired by, it wasn't just the power of the punches, but it was the accuracy and the number of punches that Buster Douglas threw. Sustained accuracy all through the bout. For 10 straight rounds, he was sharper and crisper and more accurate than the champion. If it weren't so impossible to believe that Buster Douglas would knock out Mike Tyson, you might have begun to say in the middle rounds, that it was nearly inevitable as Tyson's eye closed and as he began to wobble in the inside exchanges. But nevertheless, given the history of the champion, you continued to wait and wait for the moment when he would, with sudden fierceness, be able to turn things around. And he did knock Douglas down with an uppercut at the end of round eight. But Douglas came back to outclass Tyson in face-to-face -face exchanges throughout round nine. And then in the 10th, he took over once again and finished Tyson with the combination you saw. That was the turning point, Jim. When he was knocked down the eighth round, Douglas was, and he came back strong in the ninth round. A heart as big as Japan's economic power. 23 seconds in round number 10. The winner by way of knockout, the new heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster Douglas. Larry, if you can hear me, take it away. It's all yours. All right, I'm with Buster Douglas. Buster, Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, can you believe that? Uh, yeah, it's happening. Oh, take this out. Take this off. Why did it happen, James? Because I wanted it. Why? Why did you win this fight that nobody on mother. the planet gave you? Because his mother. In what mother. way? God bless the heart. Yeah. Let him go, Larry. Let After go. he got knocked down, I let said, you go. can't let, let him go. beat. You want to go, Joe? No, no, let him talk. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, are you saying, I mean, you came out here more animated than we've ever seen you, more focused than we've ever seen you, and you're crediting it to the fact that the death of your mother just what? Focused your mind what? <laughs> I was already focused, you know. Well, what surprised you from the get-go? What did you? What were you going to try to do from the get-go? That's what I did. Whoop his ass, you know. I mean, you come to fight, I come to fight. I told you in the, in the room. I said that it was time for James Dawson to come out out of the closet. But it seems you had. But you know, I told you that I also had times where I had great fights that would come back with two or three different fights that was mediocre, you know, and I would leave a lot of doubt. I don't blame you guys. You guys go on what you see. You understand? But I know, and my people know, that he what the real strange. James Douglas is all about. Every every challenger you, for Mike Tyson says the same thing. But you did something in there. I told to, you. I told to you to neutralize him. Why my nose? Why my nose? Why my nose? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All right, just one moment. But I told you, I told you in the room. I said, but you they weren't James Douglas. But you didn't let him get off. It seemed every time he wanted to throw a punch, either you beat him to it or you smothered him. Was that the idea? Well, I just did what I did, you know. I went out there and fought my fight. All right, now, yeah, very instinctive, very instinctive. All right, now you had him, but you get knocked down. At the well, end yeah, you know, and that, that was a good shot. I mean, you know, like I said before, a man over 200 pounds has a good shot. Did he? Did you get careless? Did you think you I had? I think so. That was just starting to get real relaxed, you know, and I got I got shook, 
I mean, well, I got hurt, hit, and I came back, you know, sucked it up. Because I knew I had him also. You know, I knew he was, every time he would try to get off, I would come back, you know, and, and offset him by beating to his punch. You know, because Mike, well, early, early in the fight, you know, Mike would come out, you know, and, and throw his big shot. You know, so what I would do is just, you know, go, go with him and come back with my own. You know, and another thing, I was very relaxed. I wasn't afraid of the man. I fear no man. Because I believe in God. That's the only man I fear. You know, thank God. I give this phrase the Lord Jesus Christ. But you, but, you, but you know, you know that you're in there with Mike Tyson. After the knockdown, did you think he would come on, or did you know you had to stop his momentum at that point? Well, yeah, I knew he was going to come because he's a champion. I mean, he was going to suck it up and come and give it, you know? And, 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 and. I was ready for it. I was, aware, I was aware of everything. You know, I was totally aware of everything. And Dad, this one is for you. I love you. Well, could you see the confusion in his eyes? You, you, one of his well, eyes I was see, closed. Well, I seen that early on, you know, because of the stiff jab. You know, I was just letting him run into the jab because, you know, it's speed. I have, I have tremendous speed. I have tremendous, tre tremendous ability. As I told you earlier in the uh, room, I said, well, you know, I'm conditioned to go 12 rounds. And that's what I was conditioned for. That's why I was able to get up from the knockdown. You know, it was a good shot. You know, I, I give him all respect for that. You know, but when I got up, it was like, well, it's time to go ahead and get him out of there. You hit him with Because I got careless. I got careless, Larry. You know, I started, you know, getting in control of everything. And then all of a sudden, he caught me with a good shot. You took some fearsome, he took some fearsome punches. This is a dream, man. This is truly a dream. I swear to God. This is a dream. This is a dream, man. This is a dream, man. Put the belt on. This is truly a dream, man. I watch you on HBO a thousand times putting belts on guys or, you know, interviewing guys, and I said, one day it's going to be me. One day it's going to be me. And thank God that it was me today. You, you, I swear to God. You, you hit him with some fearsome punches. I hit him with great shots. Early, and he didn't go. Well, yeah. Well, that's all. Well, that's great. That's great. Because you understand? Like my dad said, you know, you hit him with shots, let him take it. Like, oh, okay. You want to take a guy. shot? Yeah, be a tough guy. Just keep chopping on him. Just keep chopping on him. And eventually he's going to go. And that's what happened. As you've seen over there, he was flat on his ass. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I think that tells the whole story, Jim. Mike Tyson, flat on his whatever you want to call it. Jim. Rodney, I love you, Rodney. Uh, James Buster Douglas, 29 years old, Columbus, Ohio, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Well,